So, welcome to Wine Library TV. Who is our host? What, I am. What's your name? I'm Gary And What are we drinking today, Gary? We're drinking wine. How does it smell? Mine's red. <laughs> Mine's not black. Is, is it profound? It is profound. <laughs> Does it bring the thunder, Josh? You, it brings the thunder. <laughs> it's bringing the thunder. Josh, does it taste? Josh, does it taste like the Marlboro Man saddle? What? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show. What an introduction by Josh. Little Josh up in Canada, Davey L. Thanks for sending it in. Canada Dave, you know, he's a Raptors fan. Otherwise, I really like him. One of the real hardcore Baniacs, very early on. Good, good fan. And today's show is going to kick serious a dollar sign, dollar sign, because we are going to be talking about something that's really hot on the internet. And what's really interesting to me is I, I claim that it's going to be food week this week, and I've completely abandoned that. So once again, I've completely, well, you know, here's an apple. You know, I, I've really struggled, and, and, and I apologize. We will bring more food to the table. But this caught my attention, and it's been really buzzing on the net. Dig picked it up. A lot of people talking about it. Color Lovers, Mott, Link is a tremendous site. If you enjoy the color, a la, let's say green, the best color, this is a site you need to seriously seek out. Graphic designers, other people, art, and just in general, it's a rad, rad site. Now they did something on wine, and really what they uh, did was pretty interesting. They, they, they claimed that you can tell the quality and the aging of a wine based on its color. Um, let me read a couple things that they did. By pouring a small amount of wine and tilting the glass approximately 45 degrees, we'll spread the wine enough for us to observe a span of the color and determine the quality of a wine in the white, blush, or red families where trees have rings, wines have color. They did go on and had some interesting you know, examples. Again, check out the site. Finally, they did have a full disclosure. We are not wine experts. We are color lovers. The colors uh, above are exaggerated to help illustrate the color changes in wine. If you are not... If you are drinking a wine that is actually as bright as some of the whites and blush above, you're probably drinking a wine cooler, not quite wine. No wine has harmed during the creation of this post, but a lot of wine was consumed. If you're a wine expert and we got something wrong, let us know and we'll update. Then it was picked up by Lifehacker, another phenomenal site, and they said uh, this post contains an exaggerated palette of wine colors and their association meanings. It looks like wines on the darker end of the spectrum are older and or may be, have oxidized and, there, and are therefore not in their prime. While the lightest wines are generally very young and a bit immature, wine aficionados, give us your take and comments. While I'm not a wine aficionado, I'm a little bit more of a thunder bringer, I will kind of attack this notion that color can tell you the age and quality. Let's start right over here, Mont. Let's move around the camera a little bit. Let's zoom in. We're going to talk about a very special bottle. And now you want to talk about my commitment to the Vaniacs. Here it is, right off the top. This is a 1975 Chablis from William Feb from Le Priesus Vineyard that I bought at a garage sale. And why I bought it at the garage sale was because it was a 1975 wine. That is my birth year. And I wanted to represent, I never wanted to open this wine, but because of this you know, experiment, and I want to step up and kind of make a point and help out, uh, you know, color lovers and life hacker and everybody else and the Baniacs out there. I, I did pour this into a glass, and now what you're going to notice is this is oxidized. I mean, this is cooked at its finest, smells like sherry. It is absolutely, positively gone. Now, what you'll notice, and let's bring it over here. We've got the Greek wine. Bring up here. You're going to notice that on these colors, now this is the Greek wine that we did, the Limonos Muscat from the other day, which is a 2002 Muscat, you're gonna see the colors, though not exact, are awfully close. However, you know, Muscat, this is being oxidized, may not be the perfect example, so let's move to the next example, which is the wine we'll be tasting. It's uh, the uh, Barat Chablis Premier Cru Le Fourneau. This wine, on the other hand, 
is apples to apples. This is a 2005 version of this 1975 version, 30 years later, kinda sorta, and you can see where the color really kicks in. And so for their theory where the brown wines are oxidized and unhealthy, that is kind of true in this example. However, not as much in this example where this wine is you know, not anywhere close to unhealthy. It tastes like Grand Marnier, but it's clearly healthy. And so that's one example that kind of goes in the direction that they may be correct. Now, let's go to this example on the color scheme. This is the Lopez, Heredia de Lopez, Vina Bosconia. 1981 Rioja, and this is the Casquina Morciano Nebbiolo, and uh, the Morcianino uh, and the Lopez. You will notice, and this one's uncanny. One is from '81, one is from 2004, and the color is almost, absolutely, positively identical. Really uncanny. Mod, can you get even more in here? I mean, we're talking about the colors are super duper close in, in color, and this is a great example of a $17 wine to a $70 wine, a 1981 wine to a 2004 wine. We're talking about you know 23 year difference, and this is an example where I do not believe that the color in any shape or form is gonna give you any sneak peek into the quality or the aging of the wine. Uh, uh, and uh. But, you know, I even had to take the Thundercats off the table today. Remember, if you've got any Thundercats, send them. Take a picture first. I know a lot of you are sending them already. Take a picture like this. So, now, and finally, and then we'll get into the tasting parts, as we have been talking about this pretty cool experiment. Really, really great topic. What we have here is the Clarendon Hills 1996 Clarendon Shiraz. And this is from 96, and a great wine, a $60 wine. I've had it a long time ago, so I'm excited to try it again. And this is the Clay House 2005 Syrah from Paso Robles. And you can see here, this is the uh, Clarendon Hills, this is the Paso Robles. Maybe not completely identical, pretty darn close, and I was kind of giving guesses when I popped these wines, so we didn't do too, too bad at all. This one looks a little muddier, the uh, Clarandon Hills, but all in all, the darkness is, and the color is very, very close, and again, we're talking about an almost 10 year difference, and once again, a situation where I do not believe, let me set this up the way we wanna do it today, I do not believe that the color has as much of an impact on the overall quality and aging of it. So. In conclusion, I'm bringing out the big ass glass today. In conclusion, I, I, you know, I'm, I don't want to disrespect because I'm such a big fan of, of uh, color lovers, but in conclusion, I really think, and this is just one tiny experiment that I wanted to bang out real quick for all the Baniacs and all the people that are, have been following this story on the net. Um, there's really no correlation. I mean, there, it, it is, it is definitely something you can basic rule, but it's really like a stereotype. There's at least 4,917 examples that I can come up with right now off the top of my head that counter dick, that you counteract, you know, just go totally against the, uh, the chart and the thought process of that experiment. So while colors rock, and I know where they were going with it, and it's definitely a fun little rule, there's a, some trueness in every stereotype, um, I'm gonna have to say that color has no impact on the aging or the quality of a wine. Now that I've got that, off my chest. Let's set this up. I don't know how I mixed it up so poorly. And let's do the show. So, we're starting off with this. This is a lot of fun. There's so many things on the table. I'm having fun here. All right. This is the uh, uh, Domaine Barat uh, Chablis Le Fourneau 2005. 100% Chardonnay. We've been talking a lot about Chardonnay. 23 US dollars, 89 points, Allen Meadows. Let's see what's going on here. 
So let's talk about a couple things. Uh, lots of people emailing me about fantasy football. Will I join their league? Can I start a wine library league? The answer is absolutely not. I am unfortunately unable, cannot do it, will not do it. I can't play fantasy football because my entire loyalty, mentality, thought process, devotion, and focus is on your New York Jets. I can't do it. I won't do it. I love the fantasy baseball, but I don't play fantasy football. Everybody's stunned by that, but that just tells you I'm a better fan of my team than you are. Deal with it. Let's get on to the wine. Let's give us a little bit of a sniffy snip. Now, Forneau is a tremendous uh, vineyard in Chablis. You know what I think about Chablis. We just talked about it yesterday with the stainless steel shards. Um, a lot of Chablis do use oak. Uh, this one does as well, so I'm excited about trying it. It does come across, it's amazing. Even with the stainless steel versions from California yesterday, on the bouquet, most of those came across as citrus, apple, pear, mango, you know, the things that we talked about yesterday, very fruit driven. However, this, the barat on the nose is coming across much more mineral driven, much more, you know, rock driven. You know, you're getting a lot of rocks and minerals and all sorts of different things going on. Even a little hint of, uh, I want to go with like rotten, rotten pineapple. And though that might not smell great, it's just kind of got a funkiness to it. This really does have a little bit of like, you know, it's October 16th in the dorm rooms and some people still have not done their laundry. And they threw a pineapple in the corner. And that overall smell is what's coming through in this wine. Let's give it a whirl. Got some medium body components. Ooh, I actually really not a big fan of this wine at all. I'm really surprised. Um, I find it light and uneventful. It, remain, it reminds me of a lot of the Chardonnays I can get out of the Macon in in France for ten to twelve dollars. This is a major pass to me. I'm gonna score this wine 81 points. I'm gonna art monk it on your ass today. Uh, 81 points on this wine. I just do not feel this in any shape or form. I find it light, disjointed. Uh, the bouquet is nice, which really saves the wine for me. It's, it, but that's funky and different. I don't see a lot of people really liking that either. So uh, I'm going to give this wine a major pass. I do not see where Alan Meadows, 89 points, he is a pretty conservative critic. So I just don't see where that is coming through. I don't know if it's the big-ass glass or what, but that is an awfully poor start to today's show. Casquina Morosino Nebbiolo, 17 U.S. dollars. Now what really makes me excited about this wine is that um, I don't think a lot of people in this country really realize how fun, amazing, and value-driven Nebbiolo is in America. Most people drink Nebbiolo when they drink Barolo and Barbaresco, yet wines that are lab labeled as Nebbiolo just by itself tend to get very overlooked and are underappreciated and are priced extremely well. And if you're a big Italian wine cuisine fan, wine cuisine, Italian food and wine fan, these wines offer tremendous opportunity. I'm a, I'm a big fan of going in and instead of ordering Chianti or Sangiovese, ordering a Nebbiolo. Um, they're just really interesting wines, and I'm, I'm really excited about trying this. I've never had it, but uh, Tom Choco, our Italian guy, is really ranting and raving about it, so I'm excited. As you can see, again, on the color, it is really not super, super dark. It's a little bit more classic red wine color from the pre-1990 mid explosion of people going to purple and black. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff, sniff. I'm getting a very perfumey uh, violet kind of component on the nose I like quite a bit. Pretty tight, I gotta be honest with you. Not too much going on aromatically. Uh, not as much as I be, you know, was hoping for. I always tend to get some truffles, some escargot, some mushrooms, stinky feet. There's always fun, fun stuff going on in a Nebbiolo, usually rounded with beautiful strawberries and cherries to kind of offset the guys like me that like stinkers and the people that like fruit. So I call them stinky fruit fit wines, but this wine is kind of not giving me a whole, whole lot at all. Very floral in its approach. But that's about it, which is a little bit of a bummer for me because I love the bouquet so much. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl.
this is extremely dry. I remember when I first got into the wine industry, that's what people would ask me. Give me a wine that's dry. That was like the thing. You never hear that anymore. But for all those old school, early 90s people that want a dry wine, here it is. This wine is extremely dry. It completely attacks my palate, my mid palate. You know, the mid palate, excuse me, on this wine was extremely the focus point for me. This wine starts off very, um, a little acidic, uh, a little sour cherry-esque. Then it gets very round and com- and finishes with a beautiful component of a, uh, of like pine needle and, uh, and, uh, forest floor. Uh, I, I really like this wine. Uh, it's got very classic Italian flavor profile. It's very old world in its approach, no doubt. Um, this is a wine that really would pair tremendously. I can't help but sit here while looking at this wine and thinking about how tremendous it would be right now to have a little plate of gnocchi. That would be a tremendous uh, uh, just a fantastic, exuberant combination with this wine. This wine is very well priced, seventeen dollars for the old school flavors you're getting. Because old school flavors are starting to creep up. You know, old school stuff goes up in price, and I kind of see it going up with uh, with wine now. It's like these old Nike shoes. If you can buy them at a garage sale for a buck, they're like worth hundreds of dollars. It's unbelievable how old becomes hot. This is old world in its approach. The stainless steel components. I think wine's about to go through an old school phase. And this is a wine I think a lot of people would like. Again, if you're looking for fruit, if you love Syrah, if you love Big Cabs, if you love Huge Oak, and you like Fruit Bombs, and Skittles, and Twizzlers, and Candy, and Nerds, and all that jazz, this may not be the wine for you. But if you're looking for a wine that's gonna pair perfectly with some Italian cuisine, and pastas especially, this has the floral components, the sour cherries, the, the acidity, and, and the completeness. I like this wine. I'm gonna go 90 points on this wine. This is a wine that's right up my alley, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is not for everybody. The strawberry shortcake elements were starting to come through on the nose. This is a wine that is to be reckoned with. This is a good stuff. Nice, good follow up from the first wine. Clay House, 2005 Syrah from Paso Robles. And uh, Paso Robles is really up and coming. It's been real hot for a while. This wine is 12 US dollars. Throw it up for Joe Namath on that. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. Rinse. Let's see what this is like has got going on for it. A little bit of a darker color than the last wine, so uh, that's interesting. Let's give us a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Definitely a lot more aromatic than the last wine. Uh, I am getting a little bit of the fake high C uh, additives on this wine. This wine, uh, it's a little bit hotter down there. You can really feel it. It's got a little bit of a chocolate component, which I like. The dark chocolate meets the milk chocolate and they get along, so I prefer that. That's not bad at all. That's bringing a little bit of a charisma to the nose on this wine, so I appreciate that. Let's give it a whirl. Ah, the oak monster invades hard on this wine. Ugh. Not only that, I get like a, is there a chocolate Coke? I feel like there is Coca-Cola. There is, you know? All right, if Coca-Cola, I know you're listening, you should make a chocolate Coke because you can deliver a product that costs $12 for a dollar. This wine tastes like chocolate Coke, even though it's not out. And that makes me sad. Add the Oak Monster in a big dose, especially on the finish, I didn't feel it at first. This is so not up my alley. Ugh, God, it's got like dirty, dirty vegetables that you find like outside Yankee Stadium after the vendors were done selling it. Kind of flavor. Yes, I've eaten that. You know, you gotta get it all into your palate. Wow. This is not for me. This, I'm gonna score this wine 67 points. There's just, really, it's it's doing the new world thing wrong. Then the flavors just don't taste that good. The oak is way over the top. Chocolate Coke in, in the in the house. You can buy a 12 pack for the price of this wine. Big pass. Stay away. Let's move on. The things we do for the Vaniacs, Mom. Lopez. 
Tijeradia, Vina, Boschino, 19, 9, 1981, excuse me, 94 points, Josh Reynolds, 80% Tempranillo, 15% Graciano, 3% Agraccio, I'm sorry, 3% Graciano, 2% Mazula, and this is extremely interesting Rioja. I'm very fascinated and excited to try this. Now you're getting a, a, a very ruby-esque, copper, brownish component on the color. Um, definitely, definitely a older wine. When, when you swirl it, you definitely get that copper, brownish kind of component. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Oof. Before I get into this wine, let's remind everybody, yesterday we showed two wines that we're gonna show on August 24th on WLTV Mott. Let's do another link to the two pack. We're offering free shipping, a better price. You can call all your friends around, get together, taste alongside with me, and rumors have it that it's gonna be live. Uh-huh, a little 9 p.m. Friday action. So we get the East Coast, the West Coast. Uh-huh, rumors, psst. All right, this wine smells like, you know, dirty diapers meets pickles, uh, meets cabbage, very green in, in its attack. I mean, really, it's like a three-year-old that pooped jalapeno peppers. I mean, that's what this wine smells like. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm digging it. However, this is something that people need to realize what they're getting into. This is a very different style nose. Again, it's got a very green cat. Cabbage is coming through as well. A little lettuce action, but the jalapeno peppers with the poopiness coming through. I like that. Let's give it a whirl. Extremely vegetal in its attack. Um, really interesting. You can really taste an older wine. Um, you're, you're tasting its age. It's in twilight of its career at this point. But that's fine. I think it's got four or five years, but it's definitely on the other side of the hill. Um, I like it. it's got a sherry esque component, but it does, you know, it's not oxidized, but it does have a sherry esque component on here. Um, this is classic food wine. I can't see a lot of people totally just sipping this by itself, but this would match up really well with, a, let's say, a hanger steak with pepper, a little mush, mushrooms, and mashed potatoes on the side. Might you with me? I like that. Um, I like this wine. I think Josh got a little excited. I'm not gonna go 94 points in this wine. I'm gonna go 90 points in this wine. And at 70 bones, that's going to be a little Lance Legree pass. But, but, it's an awfully solid wine. And uh, H, you're gonna be impressed if anybody knows who Lance Legree is, huh? Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, it is definitely a wine. The fact that I have a Lance Legree jersey, though. I might need to wear that. That's you just down there. I wore, never wore it. never wore it once. Never wore it once. Lance, anyway. Uh, this wine is definitely a style wine. You're either this way or you're that way. This is not going to please everybody. Uh, I'm liking it. I'm going to give it a pass uh, at 70 bucks, but I, I think it's a very serious wine. I'm really happy and thrilled that it hit my palate. I enjoyed it. I, I friend you up my wine, but I'm going to move on. And finally, boy, did I like this wine a long time ago. Clarendon Hills, 1996 Shiraz Clarendon. 92 points Robert Parker, 60 US dollars. Excited about trying this. You know, the big, big thing in the wine world is a lot of people saying that these Fruit Bomb Australian Shiraz wines can't last and will fall apart. So I am extremely curious right now to see how this wine stacks up and how it's evolved because a lot of people don't believe they can. Again, that really nice color that we saw from before. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. A little muted, a little cloudy in its color. I'm like, can we, is there any way to get that? I mean, you think people can get that in any shape or form? I don't know, but it's very interesting. You can definitely see it's not a clear cut, you know, color. It's, it's definitely got a, a muddiness component to it. Jesus, it smells like a chimney. It smells absolutely like an ashtray. Wow, this wine smells absolutely like an ashtray, or, or even more, it smells like a car that you go into with a smoker. You know, where the car, you know, there's just like, the app buds are everywhere and all that. This, this wine, my God, it really smells like cigarette smoke, like an ashtray, very, very interesting. 
I'm, I'm also getting a wild tea component. I'm getting a little bit of like a, a white cloud tea that I had per se in New York City. Kind of reminds me a lot of that. I'll give you a sniffy sniff letter. Letter. I'll give you a letter that said you sniffy sniff it. All right, let's give it a whirl. I like this wine. Very good. This is gonna get interesting. If, capital I, lowercase f, if these fruit bombs from Australia and California, the wines that all the critics, collectors, and geeks have been bashing on, saying that they're gonna fall apart and be worthless, that's why we buy classic Bordeaux and Burgundy, and they may not be wrong. There was an early part a couple years ago, I was also worried about this. If they evolve, and become wines like this, it's gonna get awfully interesting for all the guys that dump those wines at auction when they start wanting to rebuy them. This is classic. It's got some Rhone, Cote Rhone tea elements going on in it. It's got still an interesting and exotic and fruit, fruitful component that New World wines have, but it's evolved. It's calmed down, it's not a roller coaster, over the top, explosive, in your face, punching bag of a wine. No, it's gotten a little bit older. You know, it's like a retired football player or a retired wrestler. You know, the Iron Sheik is like cuddly now. You want to hug him, except when he's around the Ultimate Warrior. I don't know how many people saw that YouTube clip. However, that's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of the retired Iron Sheik. It's a teddy bear of a wine. This wine used to be very volatile, very over the top. It has calmed down dramatically. It's very polished. Great integration of pepper. Beautiful integration of black pepper. Seriously, black pepper, green peppers, bell peppers, and almost like a raspberry tart aspect. I also get beautiful, beautiful lychee fruit components on this. Let's go with a little bit of, God, this is really interesting. This wine rocks, this is good, good stuff. I'm going serious on this wine. I'm going 94 plus on this wine. This is what I look for in wine. It's that balance. The world lives in gray. It's not black and white. You know, balances everything. This has got it. This is bringing the thunder in a big time way. Really wrapping up this show perfectly. I'm in a good mood. I'm gonna drink a little bit of it. Ooh. If you're rolling and you can afford it, seek this wine out. What else? The pack, the color lovers. Check out those websites. Put the life hacker link as well, just an amazing site. Uh, question of the day, what is your favorite color? Mine is green. Because you, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world whether you like it or not.